Folks, welcome back. We're going to get started in Bible study today. I think you'll find it interesting. I hope you do. I hope you find it helpful also. And by the way, there's a, if you're watching on PBTV, there's a phone number on your screen. You can call and talk to us if you like. That's what the phone was there for. And those who are listening on the phone line, welcome back to the second half. Hope you enjoy it. We're doing everything we can to keep this thing going out, but I have to be quite honest with you. This costs quite a bit of money to do this. And if things don't turn around, probably going to stop the live streaming in the end of July, too. It costs, called the season, 250 bucks a month to keep this going. And if you're not there using it, there's no point in doing it. So we did, I'm just sharing from the heart, because I, I know you care, but if I don't bring it before the people, there's not much I can do to change it personally, but we're trying our best to reach all we can. We really are, because we are going down the tubes as a nation. We need deliverance from, with Christ, but the masses seem not to want to receive that. So I'm not really talking to the masses all the time. I'm talking to those who say they're believers. We need to see the fruit of that in the people's minds and hearts and in their actions. You, know, you always heard that actions speak louder than words. Mm -hmm. And talk is cheap. You can talk the talk, but if you don't walk the walk, that's called a hypocrite. Is that true? Yes. We're going to do a teaching today entitled Godly Healing versus Man's Therapy. <laughs> Godly healing versus man's therapy. We have had a lot of man's therapy in this country for a long, long, long time. And it temporarily heals some things, it looks like. It answers some temporary situations, but it always leads to more disease, spiritual disease especially, and mental disease. God's healing versus man's therapy. Let's start in John chapter 10. A scripture I'm sure y'all probably got memorized. If you hadn't, you should. In John 10, <clears throat> Natalie, would you, would you read verse 10? Are you there already? John 10, 10. That's a real common one. Now, want you to listen. Christ is speaking here. so Maybe, maybe we should listen to what he says, okay? John 10, 10, Natalie, please. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Yes. Right to mm -hmm. the point, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Almost made, isn't it? The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We have a society that loves death. Mm -hmm. Who does that show is in charge of society right now in this, in this nation space? Who runs the prince? Who's prince the prince of, the of the power of the air? Prince of the air. Principalities. Now, but to those who believe in Christ, he said, I come that you can have victory. Mm -hmm. That does not mean that you may not be prosecuted or persecuted as the disciples were for your faith. And that's getting closer every day. That doesn't mean as Christ went to the cross and he prayed, I don't want to do this, that you may not go through something similar in your lifetime. But we still are victorious in Christ. Is that true? That's correct. So, you see, we've got to get this thing straight. The thief, Satan, and all his minions, and all his spiritual and physical minions have come to steal, kill, and destroy. They hate us. They hate the Creator. They hate anyone who is trying to live like Christ lived. They hate the very image of mankind because we're made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. Satan hates creation. Yep. And he's destroying it one individual at a time. And the masses of people are blinded. They have, they have blinders on. They have muffs on so they can't hear this and don't want to see it. That he's destroying every living soul as much as he possibly can by destroying their minds and their youth, by controlling their spirits and their spirits and, and the way they're taught and what they see in this world. You walk into any public place today that sells books and magazines, it's full of filth. Yes, it is. I wonder, anybody here be honest with me, if you ever, how many of y'all sometimes, if you're not careful, can be tempted? Mm -hmm. Just curious. Mm -hmm. yeah. Temptation is not a sin. Giving into it is. Mm -hmm. But when you live in a society, yeah. field where it's as common to see nudity and vulgarity as it used to be to see wholeness and purity, something's wrong. Yes. Right. Do y'all remember when you were in school, young, us older folks, when to say a bad word got you in trouble? Oh, yeah. yeah. And today, it's cute. It's I remember in school, they had dress codes. 
It's accepted. Well, you know now? They had dress codes when I was in high Absolutely. There's a children uh, television shows uh, up there, show Honey Boo Boo. I never watched that, but I've heard of it. Yeah, that or Andy Griffith, which would you rather watch? Andy, Andy Griffith. Yeah. <laughs> Honey Boo Boo. But I remember Boo-boo. years ago, I, I saw two things happen in my life with children. One was in Hinton, West Virginia, at a, a, a filling station where I was calling a guy I sold for a living there and sold him things. A little boy, I mean, willing something about being the machine, the parent said no, and he took a custom fit at the station. And the parent did nothing but walk away. And one of my family members happened to them in their, fr- in their kitchen, and I was there when it happened. Their son screamed at their mommy, <coughs> turned red face, and I mean, he was all over her. Mm-hmm. She apologized. Oh, my God. I told this lady then, if you don't stop this now, it's going to cost you later. He just got out of jail for murder. Two of them was in jail. Yep, one for murder. I'm not a prophet, but I'm not a fool either. Mm-hmm. That's right. If you allow evil in your midst, it will influence your life. It'll take over your life. Isaiah 61. God the healing versus man's therapy. We, I just give you all paper today about the Constitution. I'm going to say that. We can put it now. And the seeds of destruction were planted even in that document, whether they knew it or not. And at the end of that article, I wrote down three verses. The Constitution is a piece of paper. That's all it is. This is paper and print. If the Spirit's not in you, this is dead to you. If the Spirit of liberty is not in your heart, the Constitution is just a piece of paper. It means nothing. That's how they trashed this nation because the people had no idea what where liberty comes from. Right. They think it's given by man, granted by man, and, and elected officials grant you liberty. That's impossible. <laughs> man cannot grant you anything. They give you privileges with hooks in them. With hooks in them. Bait and hook. Isaiah 61. Phil, read verse 1 if you would. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath set me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, what if if that's true? Let's go now to Luke. If you would. Now Luke's the New Testament, by the way, because you know it. Anyway. Luke <laughs> chapter four. So New Testament and Old Testament kind of tie together, don't they? Yep, they do. Oh, they're inseparable. Luke chapter four. Now I'm gonna make this point and we'll move mm-hmm. on. People say well, today <clears throat> we don't see many mighty works. Uh, and, and by, of the Lord, we don't see me. My, we don't see miracles any longer today. We don't see the effects of God the teachings in America today. I wonder why that is. Could you're be for lack gonna, of teaching. You're not going to see it on mainstream TV. They're not going to see it in the mainstream churches <laughs> <laughs> or the mainstream churches, right? No. The, the, why would the power of God be upon that upon that upon that congregation who compromises His word? He mm-hmm. cannot empower disobedient children, and He won't do it. I've been asked a thousand times, why are you not afraid? What in the name of God shall I be afraid of? But a lot of them are fearful because they don't lose that kind And who's the first one cast out? The fearful. In Revelation. Revelation. The fearful. 8 and verse 20 says, uh, the fearful. In Luke chapter 4, in verse 18. May I read that portion on care? Verse 18, chapter 4. Read for us, Lynn. Oh, pardon me. That's all right. I thought you said that. The Luke. Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Same thing. That's Isaiah to Luke. Christ said, he sent me to do this. Did Christ say that? 
Christ is the one sent to bring liberty. Why do we look for liberty, Joe, anywhere outside of Christ? If we do, we're looking to cover our sins. It's to justify. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians. How many of y'all really understand the fact that mankind is sick and dying? You see it every day. I mean, you, you all understand that, right? I wonder what some of the symptoms of a dying society is. <coughs> How about insanity? Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 28, 28? Mm -hmm. How about sheer madness? Mm -hmm. Goes hand in hand. Inability to reason. True? Mm -hmm. How about fear? Is that a sign of a, 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 a big, decaying society? Big time fear. Yep. How about fornication? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about adultery? Mm -hmm. How about murder? Mm -hmm. How about gossiping? Yeah. Bearing false witness? Yeah. How about worshiping of demons? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. How about drugs? Both prescription and non prescription? Yeah. 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 How about alcohol? Yeah. That's How about jealousies? How about envy? How about anger? How about strife? How about covetousness? Are those all symptoms of a dying society? How about false pride? Loss of natural affections? Are those symptoms? Yes. Mm -hmm. You tell me that a mother that can have her child pull apart in the womb and doesn't feel guilty, that is not that's natural? I'm not desecrating their bodies. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Tattoos. Tattoos and parasites. How about, how about witchcraft? Rebellion? Oh, it's big. Do you see it everywhere? Oh, it's blatant. How about unnatural sexual acts? Mm -hmm. you see that, too? Dying society. How much are we seeing in America? All of it. And we still, we, and I'm not picking on Phil Hudock's running for the U.S. Senate Constitution Party, and I'm right behind the man. But he's not running to guarantee you handouts and benefits. He's running for a godly purpose. Yes. Or I wouldn't support him. He'd probably take a few things away from you. He wouldn't support himself. He wouldn't run. I know for you. <laughs> but in, in 2 Corinthians <coughs> chapter 3. Let's look at verse 17. What's it say, Job? Now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That's pretty plain stated, isn't it? Yeah. Even I can understand that. So on the other hand, if, if the Spirit of Christ is not in it, Phil Hudock, what do you have? The opposite. Tyranny. Tyranny. Mm -hmm. When you watch that video, I'll give you all... I keep forgetting things. Monumental. Right? Monumental. <laughs> when you see something I didn't know existed... A statue of Massachusetts put in stone back in the 1800s to show what the pilgrims brought to America, and it goes full circle explaining step by step how America became a nation. And I didn't know that thing existed. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm fairly well studied. Mm -hmm. I watched that video and I thought, my God, they rolled in stone for us, and we're still too darn stupid to understand it. We've totally ignored it. Of course, I remember, see, something else was written in stone a few thousand years ago. Ten Commandments, maybe. Yes. And then Christ said, I'm going to in your heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something happened. Godly healing for man's therapies. It's a great falling away. Why didn't we learn about that in history class? That's a good question, isn't it? I know. It is a, it is a really huge monument, too. It's, like, it's no little. No, it's huge. It's huge. huge. I forget how big it was. It, it looks like about maybe 40 feet I'm going to say 30, 40 feet, yeah. I've yeah. seen it on Hershey Channel. Show it once. Show it once. We've seen a, somewhat of a list of the symptoms. We, must, we have to understand the symptoms are only the outward showing of an inward disease. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'd like to make one statement about Please that. Please do. Um, uh, about that thing in Massachusetts, that uh, that big monument, and that is this. I read two reviews of the movie, the oh, monumental. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the first one was absolutely scathing. It had almost nothing good to say about it, but you could tell it was written. 
by someone whose religious vision, whose worldview was not Christian whatsoever. Okay. Then I read a second one, and it was just the opposite. And I agreed with the second one as far as the cinematography. Actually, the first one said there were a lot of good things in it, but it was kind of like overdone. It really, as if the message wasn't that important to make it that dramatic. See, it's a dramatic video when you watch it. It's captivating. And the other, you know, the first one that was written by either an atheist or probably a nominal Christian, because a nominal Christian would be more uh, offended by something <coughs> wholesome and good than an atheist. And, and it was like, well, this is just overdone. It's just like they're, it's like they're making something big out of something that's not. And I thought, whoa, these two reviews tell you something. You know? It does. And if you study history and you study uh, Christ's time, you know, we'll say the Founding Fathers' time, the Pilgrims, uh, the ones that persecuted were Christians. Yeah. Right. Not more Christians. There would be the ones. You, you understand that the church killed church, killed oh, Christ. That's right. They, the, one, the Romans yeah, put him to death, but the ones that sit in the death was the so-called church. Called church. Well, in the Great Tribulation, it would be the same thing. Same again. thing. And in, when the uh, Pilgrims and Puritans finally left England, the quote church was the one that run them out. They mm -hmm. had them killed. It was a Catholic church. No point in denying that's what it was. Yeah. So we're not seeing anything new here. A lot of preachers won't even really speak to me. And I don't know why, because I've never ever harmed them. Although I did ask them one time what color <laughs> panties he's wearing. But, right. but right. this is what it is today. You cannot be nominal. A nominal, that's like being a nominal husband. I'm married one minute, next minute I'm not. That wouldn't fly too well, Marsha Jean, I promise you. No, not even the majority of the time. No, not even the minority of the time. <laughs> wouldn't. But we now have seen some symptoms. We really have. And we've got to find the, the, the cause and the cure and the, try to heal it. I can't do it for a nation, but I can for you through this book. Okay? Now, what, what, can, what could be the cause of this? I just... Could be something we ate. Think about that a minute. The original sin come from uh -huh, food. Something we ate. The apple, mm -hmm. so-called apple, whatever the fruit was. And the impression. Right. See, I, I, that's, that's a simple food. statement, but, let, but let's go to the inside. Satan come up with an idea. And we're going to share it a little bit later on in more detail. With the idea that if he got down among man, man and woman, Adam and Eve, and he come in as a great tempter, a walking serpent, a speaking serpent, which he still is, by the way. And he tempted thee with the idea of being a god unto herself. Right. True, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter three. That's called humanism. Mm -hmm. right. The same temptation today. In the scriptures, he said, eat that fruit. So she literally took a bite of the fruit. Mm -hmm. Must have been passion fruit. It must have been passion fruit. <laughs> <laughs> a forbidden fruit. Now today, in the spiritual sense, when you take a bite out of the humanistic idea that you're a god, you poison society again. You understand that? That original sin that I wasn't even there when it happened still plagues us, doesn't it? Yeah. That Christ come to free us from that sin. Now that's what he did for us. Why, and I'm asking me this question as well as anybody else, why do we not walk in that victory? Is it because there's still sin in our lives, unrepented? Well, that could be part of it. Mm -hmm. And unbelief is a sin. Doubt. How many's ever had doubts? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a big word. But man tries to find, you know, the answer, the the disease, and th and thinks that they come up all kinds of reasons why we're in this mess. It's the environment you live in. That's not your fault. It's how your race feel. It's the environment. You ever heard that? No. Oh, yes. You ever heard that? Because you're raised in a poor family and, you, and your dad did drugs, you're in drugs. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Or you're abusive. Or ch you, your dad's abusive. You, it's all in the environment. You have, we, have to ch we have to uplift the poor and give them welfare benefits to make them better so they'll have better children. Well, if it's environment, then uh, nobody's got a chance because everyone's going to have something in their environment that's going to tempt them. And, yeah. And that they have to overcome. You have to overcome the environment. Well, if it's not the environment, it has to be genetic. <laughs> But you know, food has played oh, a role in the Bible from the beginning clear through. Oh, yes. Uh, when uh, they ate the, uh, uh, 
uh, Saul and his brother from Saul, uh, what killed the yellow one? Yeah. Uh, King killed Abel. King killed Abel. Then you go on up to Egypt and the uh, seven years phantom in Egypt, they made a change. That's when the king took over the whole land. Yep, he did. It was Joseph that's in command. He was suffering. Uh, with the, I forget where it was at, told them not to uh, take a king's table, cut your throat first. Proverbs. Mm -hmm. So if it's not the environment, then it has to be genetic, like I said. Now, wait a minute now. If we think that's stupid, they're calling a gay gene. That's genetic, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So you can't help it if you're a sexual deviant. Of course, now, let's just go a little further with that. If that's true, then I can't help being a murderer. It's yep. in my genes. You were born that way to be a murderer. Do you understand? Yeah. Sin is genetic then. In a sense, it is. But the point of it is we can blame everything then on the genes, Phil Hudock. Well, you can't they, punish me. It's not my fault. If they blame guns for the murder, then everybody with the gun show wouldn't get out alive. <laughs> that's yeah. it. Yeah, that's true. But now look what we've done. With these ideas of environments and genetics, we've invented psychiatrists and psychologists to answer all these problems, haven't we? Pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals. Yeah. This is all man's therapy. Yep. Pills, pills, pills. And it works temporarily. You give a man a mind-controlled drug, he feels happy. Mm -hmm. Always a payment. Always a payment, yes. Yeah, until something changed, then it goes wrong again to get a different pill. Well, we, how many of y'all ever read about Sigmund Freud? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What in that? Freud was a fraud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was a liar. That's why he's he well grew, paid. He went mad before he died, too. Oh, he did. Yeah, exactly. Now, please understand this, folks. There's nothing wrong with me as a brother or sister trying to help you in a situation. That's what we're here for. Yeah. But a man who is trained from a humanistic standpoint can only give you temporary, very uh, nominal answers for situations that may help you temporarily. When you give someone, I know this for a fact, I've seen them. They're depressed people who take drugs to get them to be undepressed, and it works for a while. Mm -hmm. Then it wears off. Antidepressants don't get rid of depression. No, invigorate it covers them up. Well, it makes it even worse. It's worse. And when you go off of them, you go nuts. I'm telling the truth. Yeah. And they every, every mass shooter in this country has been on drugs, mind control drugs. Every one of them. And they push them. Oh, yeah, they push them. America is the biggest drug dealer in the world. Well, that's what the Bible said in, in Jeremiah 18. Really? Jeremiah 18, sorcery. Jeremiah 18, what chapter? Jeremiah, I mean, the Revelation. Sorcery. 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 20, 21. 20, 21. Look at it. Sorcery. That's us. Well, sorcery means pharmacia. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, look at Jeremiah chapter 6. I want you to know this is not a new uh, malady, if you will. This is nothing new. Uh, this, this happened in, in Israel's time also, whenever they turned to man to answer their problems. And i, I got to tell you, folks, I'm guilty. I'm as guilty as I can be. I was, yes, through ignorance I've been duped. But my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't know, when with that statue in Massachusetts, we didn't know the foundations that were given us. We didn't know. Because we didn't know that Social Security was, was, a, was an abomination against God, we didn't sign up for it. Because we didn't know about food stamps being an abomination, we signed up for it. I'm guilty. Man's benefits are deadly. Spiritually, mentally, and physically, they're deadly. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be an adultery, too? It is adultery. adultery. It is adultery. We're covering a little bit. You're getting, you're getting ahead of me there. That's true. We are all idolatrous. Yeah. Yeah. And I say this out of pure love. I'm talking about me here. We do not really want freedom. Freedom means you make it or don't make it on your own. We want cushions and nets in case we fall. And man can promise you that. Mm -hmm. What does it cost you? Everything Condition. You Your soul. Mm -hmm. What did it cost uh, uh, Esau. Pardon? Esau. 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 What did it cost Esau. him for a bowl of soup? <laughs> His birthright. His birthright. And what was that? His father's kingdom. Mm -hmm. yep. Guess what has cost us on this earth? Our, no. our this was our father's kingdom here for this nation. Mm -hmm. This people lived under the rules of God. What did it cost us for trusting Roosevelt before I was ever born? 
Slavery. Birth rate. You got me started, Phil. That's free food. Did I? Yeah, you did. You said hello. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 6. Now you have to get over it. <laughs> <laughs> I will, so no doing here. Now look at this. Verse 14. For they, the priests, the leaders of the land, healed also the hurt of my daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Oh, Father, we'll see through church. Yeah. <laughs> Johnson said, President Johnson, Lyndon Bain Johnson, the one who brought in the 501c3 in 1954, yeah. said, we will solve America's problems. We're going to declare a war on poverty. We're going to get rid of poverty, and everyone will be happy, and everyone will be content, and we'll have a good society. Mm -hmm. Maybe he called it the Great Society. He called it the Great Society. And he declared a war on poverty, and poverty's increase, just like a war on drugs, and a war on terrorism brings more tyranny to the land. But people thought, yay, we're going to solve this. Well, Roosevelt said, I'll put the chicken in there, pot and corn in the garage. You trust me, and I'll give you some of your tar on. I got the answer, Butch. What's that? Have not declare a war on Christianity. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> Which is probably going to be the next step. And we're actually, that's what will happen. Christianity will flourish more when war is declared on them. Outright war. Yeah. 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 Maybe some stay in there. But you see, this is what I'm trying to say. Man's therapy works temporarily, but it increases every evil in society that it can be. We have given men license to sin by supporting their sinful nature. We pay for women to have babies. Then we pay them to get rid of them. We pay, yeah. But we will pay more to an un unwed mother to have more children because it's more, more checks. And many of them do that for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's generation. That is called a curse. Yep. That's man's therapy to destroy mankind. Satan hates you. And these, these benefits he guarantees you will destroy you. Yeah, we pay the man to rule over us to give us those benefits. And then we bow down and kiss his feet when he gives them to us. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Pay the man. Right. He steals from you, then you but he says, him when he gets some back. He'll heal you. He'll cry, peace, peace. He'll give you something for a while, and that peace is a master's for a while, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Peace, peace, when there's no peace. Who is the prince of peace? Satan? No. Uh, Jesus. Man's Christ. man? Christ. Christ. Only. Christ. Christ. Now let's go to Isaiah 57. Yeah, show me one drug insert where there are more positive aspects to the drug. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I get tickled listening to drug commercials. Isn't that something? Oh, yeah, they got like 30 things. Might cause this. They're off to get the disease and take the cure. Yeah. yeah. I'd rather have nervous leg syndrome than <laughs> have <laughs> <laughs> a heart attack. Nah, it's good to have you back today, honey. Really good to have you with us. Enjoyed the enjoyed lesson so far? Mm hmm. Keep on going. Isaiah 57. Now I want you to listen with the what thus saith the word of God. How many years have we heard man cry, we're going to bring peace to the world. We're going to bring peace to the Middle East. We're going we're to start the United Nations, it was called League of Nations at first, to stop world wars. Did they not say that? Mm -hmm. And yet they're behind them. All that was was to get the world under one umbrella. Mm -hmm. Control. Called a new world order. Mm -hmm. To get people and nations to lose their sovereignty, Joe. Mm -hmm. To surrender to a head, a man, a, a panel full of men, Phil Hudock, who can tell them how to control the world. Who can tax you at whim for your own good. Who can mm -hmm. promise you this. Who can, who can take away that. But if you trust them, they'll give you a, a little piece of bread. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Israel did the same thing. Israel cried all through the wilderness. They wouldn't go back to Egypt, didn't they? Yep, they wanted to turn yeah. back. They, they were living. They, oh, we can't trust God. We don't, we don't have it in our hands. We're going to go back to Egypt. Yep, yeah, we were slaves there. They beat us and stoned us and whatever, but they guaranteed us something to eat and play sleep. Yep. True. True. We're going back in Egypt, which was a form of the world. Guess what we did? Our founding fathers, like Moses, they brought us out, put us in a promised land, lived in a promised land. And set us free for a while, but then we'll go back into the world, didn't we? Yep. Mm -hmm. 
That's good preaching, Kelly. That's that's right on. Amen. Now look what it says in one little simple verse, Isaiah 57, verse 21. What's that say there, Mary? There is no peace, saith my God to the wicked. Wicked individuals, and they will include us, are never satisfied. Yeah. We're never content. They never have peace. Did Paul did not say that if you have food and raiment, they're with to be they're with to be content? Mm -hmm. Did not also say that he learned how to abound, how to be abased? Did Paul spend any time in prison for what he preached? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Was he ever whipped? Yes. Oh yeah. Was he was he was he thrown to the lions? Mm -hmm. Did did he say I bear in my body the marks of Christ? Mm -hmm. Did he not say that? Yeah. Yeah. And today, because someone laughs at us, we cower in a corner. Because they call me an anti-Semite, or I'm a racist, or I ain't going to taste when the other things call me. <laughs> but because they call me names, I'm going to back away and say, oh, I'm sorry. No, no. I didn't mean to offend you. That makes you go strong. Everyone needs to get out of their comfort zone. Exactly. And, uh, you know, it used to be the statement was, I can remember crying to my parents saying so and so said such and such and they just said well sticks and stones will break your bones but names, names will never, never hurt you oh, yeah. mm -hmm. you don't hear that anymore you don't no, hear you that don't. no no yeah. no the Washington Redskins has changed your name yeah, yeah. it offended some so, Native Americans yeah. so, but you I, know I, I don't, we're murdering 4,000 babies they were fighting over a football team's name that's just, oh. call, them the, call them the rednecks I don't care <laughs> I'm a redneck don't offend me none <laughs> What I like is when I go out petitioning, mm -hmm. sticks and stones will break my bones, but names get me petitioner signers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. We've seen it. I'm We've serious. It. They'll, they'll come over and sign as soon as somebody calls me an a-hole or something. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, that'll just bring them right on over. <laughs> you say, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for the name, but... You know. We started seeing that in Elkins. <laughs> for, the, for the maladies, the, the sickness of mankind, who have we almost always turned to to fix it? Government. 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 Uncle Sam, he's called it Uncle Sam. If you got a storm, the power goes out, the road got a pothole in it. But don't we call that Caesar? Sure. That's render, what it is. Yeah, rendering the season things that are season. And, render, season, and we God. have to. We we listen, I'm saying this out of pure love. And I and I last hour I told about the EPA coming in here to control water. Yeah. And I will not let it happen to my property as long as I'm breathing, but we deserve it. Mm -hmm. We, we take the benefits, road. we deserve it. We went down that road. We did. We should have never. We did. did. Our daddies and grandfathers shouldn't have left to go that road. We and we're getting what we deserve. I will not do it because I can't. But we are getting what we deserve yes. because we turned the man for handouts. He yeah. owned us. Please read, me, read Nehemiah chapter 9 and see what it says, the last couple verses. Because of our sin, Nehemiah said, God Almighty, they control they own our cattle and they own our bodies. Matter of fact, let's look at that. You got a minute? Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Kelly, find that while we're done the verse. Nehemiah 9. 9, yes. Same the time turn back here. Now, man has turned, unfortunately, almost always in this country for at least the last hundred and some years to man for answers. The answer had been right in front of them all this time. But they didn't want to hear that. True? It took faith. It took faith. And that's what, the Israel, that's what Israel had to have, uh, was faith to know that God provided for them. But they didn't want that. They wanted substance. Real substance. When you find Nehemiah, somebody holler at me. I'm at Nehemiah 9, it? but I'm not sure where that was. I think chapter 30, verse good? 37. That's what I thought. I had to turn over one more. Read it to me, please. And it yieldeth much increase. Talk about the land now. The land. The okay. 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 All right, and it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. Also they have dominion over our bodies and over our cattle at their pleasure, and we are in great distress. Now read that again. Dominion over what? Read that to me again. You want me to just... You just read the whole verse. Okay. And it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. Also they have... Dominion over our bodies. You know, this is right here. What did that just say? 
dominion over our body. So could that be why when you got your census, it says from the Department of Commerce where it comes from? Mm-hmm. So they have ownership of our bodies. Of our rights to us because we gave it to them. Yes. We became voluntarily into servitude under their Caesar. So we have, through our ignorance, for bowl of porridge, sold our bodies. Yeah. There's our birthright. Yep. Uh, is that pretty clear so far? Feel any comments? I know you're thinking real hard. Well, just voluntary indentured servants. Yep. yep. That's what it is. Except it's for life. Or, or a chicken. Yeah, there's no, uh, there's no uh, expiration date. Well, as I try to understand this, and I know I just said that our maladies are many, we always turn to man's therapies for treatments. Now, and man can be pretty good at treating symptoms, physically and mentally, for a little while. Actually, it, it's amazing to think that pharmaceuticals can have so many temporary, ben, you know, uh, what appears to be good effects. Mm -hmm. But, like you say, there's always side effects and control. Mm -hmm. So, temporarily, man can ease the symptoms. Like you said, he can heal a little bit. A little bit, mm -hmm. the people. But this is where we are today because we have put our thoughts and minds, if I got a problem, I go to the doctor. If I, if I have mental problems, I go to the doctor. Or I go to shrink. Or I go somewhere to get temporary answers. And walk out there feeling better think I'm cured. But you see, they don't make money by curing you. Did you ever see it? <laughs> Well, you know, in one of the first commercials, uh, you have to be at least 40 or 50 years old to relate to this, but uh, they came out with, I think it was Excedrin, and they, they called it Excedrin Headache Number Such and Such, and they show a woman mm -hmm. in the kitchen, and the children are crying, and the fort, food's boiling over and everything, and she's got a headache. So she takes this, this, it needs this a pill, and it, as if that's going to stop the children from crying <laughs> and, <laughs> and the food from, food boiling, over. from bo boiling over. I mean, it just, you know, it was so obvious that this yeah. wasn't treating the problem. This was just getting rid of With the pain. symptoms. Yeah, they should being a la la later. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm on, at least I'm being quite honest. What, how, how long have I been going already? Anybody have an idea how uh, started? Oh, wow. Am I about an hour yet? I have no idea. About 40, 50, about 40 minutes. Okay. I, mean, I don't want to keep you worried about today, but I want you to stop and think a minute with me, if you would, because this is really important. I'm as guilty as anybody else in here. I truly, truly am. Maybe more guilty than most. Because we all turn to man, like I said, for, the, for this help, temporary help in treating symptoms. And the reason we do that is the reason we want have to take blood pressure pills and all that, and I'm guilty. I'm trying my best by natural ways to get it back down, so I'm going to send that pet doctor right now. Go up next, not next to you, to Jeff next. It's because it lets me continue my lifestyle with a temporary help. You follow what I'm saying? I can go ahead and eat what I want and take a pill. I don't have to adjust the way I live, just take a pill. Beatles Is that song. not true? The Beatles had a song, it was called A Little Help From My Friend. There you go. It was, it was drugs. Is that not true? Mm -hmm. That's what we'll, we'll go to church to get a feel good sermon. Mm -hmm. So it, it'll cover us over and make it smooth things, preach to smooth things. Get you rushed. I don't want to get convicted. I want to get a smooth sermon so I feel better when I go home. I'll get my fix for a little while. Yeah. And I'll go home and say, man, I'm glad I went to church. I felt so good. But I love that preacher. He makes me feel good, man. Oh, you can live like hell and go to heaven. One saved, I always say, wait for the rapture. Don't worry about it. I'm going home and party. Yeah. Sure. They don't want a cure for their sins. They want a way to smooth it over so they can stay in it and feel good about it. Cover it up. He wants to drive on turkey bone when you can drive on 219. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, that, that's low. <laughs> but, we, but we practice sorcery. Sorcery, sorcery. In pharmacia, in, in, in spiritual teachings, it's all witchcraft. We, we, we do this again so we can cover all the symptoms, the mental, physical, spiritual symptoms we have. It's pharmacia, and it doesn't have to be a pill. It can be a false teaching to make you feel better. That's witchcraft. Mm -hmm. It's called an escape. It is. And now we have churches condoning outright sexual deviancy and say it's natural and that they are Christians. You better have a lightning rod. And asbestos underwear. <laughs> Let's go to 1 John chapter 3. Uh -huh. 
So you see, we are looking at all the symptoms Joe just mentioned. All the symptoms man is addressing. They're addressing poverty and insanity and crime. At least most of them. Some of them are legal now. Murder and whatever. But they're addressing and trying to heal them by different penalties and more laws. We're the most legalistic society in the world. But one of the most crime ridden in the world also. Mm -hmm. Uh, you've heard it said that you cannot legislate morality. You really can't. That must be taught in the hearts of men. Laws are morality. for the lawless, not for this, not for the law. Yes. Morality will cause the legislation. Legislation will not cause the morality. There you go. And we have un immoral men in office making laws. Mm -hmm. What do you have in society? Chaos. Planned. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, if you look around today you'll find that man's theories are not working. They don't. Take a look around you. Mm -hmm. Use common sense. You got some left, right? Common sense. Look around you and watch. And if you want to see a barometer, watch the young people. Walk down the street in the Elkins or Summers Bill or somewhere in the store and watch how they act and how they dress. No, no. it's just as bad. Look, look, at, look at their piercings and their tattoos. <sighs> Be a people watcher. You can see a lot. Oh, yes. You see, we're doing all these things to treat symptoms, but the disease is still there, and that's called sin. Yep. S I N. Sin. Only one cure for sin. It's not therapeutic drugs. It's not counseling. It's the blood of Christ. Right. That's it. Yeah. I know I've got to work on myself, and, and even like with the Constitution Party, that's got to be a message that everyone takes to heart is that. We can't do any good unless we get ourselves. We cannot. Right. You know, and I say that they've come a ways on that. They've come a way, a way on that. Yeah. You know, Jeff asked basically. Oh, yeah. But look at First John chapter 4. Mm. But, you know, you've got, you got to get that moat out of your own eye. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's a constant battle with me. It is. I want to help Joe, and I want to help Ken, I help you. But I've got to get me in line, too. Yeah. And, that, and by the way, that's what we do for each other. Right. Well, that's, that's the edification. Yes. To strengthen each other, to encourage each other, to uplift each other, to cry with each other, to help each other. To laugh at each other. Yeah. And laugh at or laugh with? Laugh both. Laugh at and laugh with. But you know, I don't know if y'all, I mean, when I'm preaching like this, I, there's a power of surgeon inside me that I just can't explain. It makes me feel so good. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I know I've got authority. And I'm. Speak it in authority in the name mm -hmm. of Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm only a man. I'm only flesh and blood. You cut me off bleeding one day, I'm going to die physically. But that doesn't scare me. I'm going to preach as long as I have power to speak. That's right. Because it's not me, Phil. It really isn't. It's the spirit within you. Just don't become a masochist. But to <laughs> <laughs> now, First John chapter, chapter 3. Mm -hmm. People know, well, what is sin? And we're taught in churches today... That you're in the grace, the law is not affecting your life, right? right. You're in the grace, you're no mm -hmm. longer uh, under the law, and you're really not. It's called selfish. But they take it in a way that causes us lasciviousness, license to sin. Mm -hmm. They do. I have heard preached behind the pulpit by a guy named Chick Cart years ago. So if I was caught in bed with another woman when Christ came, I'd go with him because I'm saved. Oh, of course. Oh. <laughs> I'm serious. When I heard that, I was just a new Christian. I thought, "Really? That don't sound right." Right. And if I caught been the one, Marcia see it left real quick too. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, but look at this. Now this is New Testament, First John, New Testament, right? Mm -hmm. In verse th uh, chapter three, look at verse four. Yeah. Whoso committed sin, transgress his grace. No. no. The law. The law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about my new, I'm talking about the moral, absolute moral law set before us today that are undisputable, undeniable, even nature itself teaches us sin. That's right. Well, I tell you, you got Tegan riled up. <laughs> well, maybe somebody's out there. You, you wouldn't move the camera, so That's I didn't right. go. That's right. Okay. Let's get back to Genesis. That's pretty near in the beginning, isn't it? Chapter 2. Yeah. 
Oh, it's all barking that about me, man. No, I'm ignoring it. Chapter 2 of Genesis. So we see that sin is transgressing the laws of God. Now let me ask a question among the adults in here today. How many of y'all know by instinct, before he's ever Christian, that fornication was sin? Yeah. How many of y'all knew before you were a Christian that sexual perversion was a sin? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He said he was just saying amen. Amen, all right. <laughs> and how many of y'all, before you were a Christian, knew that murder was sin? Yeah. yeah. How about lying? Yeah. So we didn't need we didn't need the law of God to understand that. Mm-hmm. It was in nature. Which by the way, Romans chapter one teaches, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes, but that's just it. The people think that they sin is determined by whatever the law is. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So they think if the law says it's okay, it's not sin anymore. And Jeremiah chapter five, verse the last I can't remember verses. The last verse of that chapter says that the leaders lead falsely, the preach preach falsely, and people love it that way. Mm-hmm. Well, it justifies their sin. But you know the strange thing, but there is Gentile countries that are more in tune with God's commandments than we are. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Nations after, for example. Yeah. But again, we go to churches now that take a vote on God's laws. Mm-hmm. Yeah. True? That's true. Mm-hmm. It's very true. I didn't know he had that authority. You reckon they changed his mind when he first turned voted him down? You reckon they changed his mind about the sin? You mm-hmm. reckon they looked down and said, oh my gosh, maybe they're right. Christianity yeah. must be a, a democracy then. Yeah. But then they're admitting that Jesus is hot, sodomy. If they agree to say yeah, that, we I agree. Can, do sodomite marriage and say Jesus is a sodomite. Jeremiah chapter 2. Just imagine when you were in school that they no. would have backwards Genesis days. Chapter and no, I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 2. Oh, oh, say? Just imagine if th- that back in when you were in school, them having backwards day, pajama day, um, cross dress day. Cross dress day. Yeah. day, yeah. I mean, it's, no, it wouldn't, that, that it wouldn't have real. flown then, no. would it? No. Because there's a whole different mindset. And, you know, and all the time growing up to in my, in my house in Monterville, the little tiny house in Monterville, my dad set rules, me and Dick didn't get, didn't get a boat. Well, that wasn't fair, was it? We couldn't vote. No, we had an infraction of any of those rules. Yeah, we, we were. He, he got back on the track pretty quick. Mm-hmm. But Genesis chapter 2, look at this very simple scripture. Let's look at verse 15. And the, Lord t- and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden, to dress it and keep it. The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat it, eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now that's pretty clean cut and pretty clear cut, I would say. When you say that? Mm-hmm. Now chapter three of the same book. We're covering what we're missing about what is something we ate. Do you know that when you accept the lies of humanism, you've ate something spiritually and mentally? Now think a minute what I just said. When you accept false teachings, you've eaten something. Now just out of curiosity in this room today, how many of y'all know you've been taught something wrong now that you see it, but you accept it back in the past? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You were poisoned, but you didn't know mm-hmm. it, did you? Until the light of Christ shone in your heart, Kelly, you had no idea you'd been poisoned. Well, we accept lies as truth. Yeah, they sound good. Mm-hmm. They sound reasonable, don't they? Oh, definitely. I mean, poverty causes crime, right? Ain't that what you've been told? Yeah. I know growing up, we didn't have a whole lot. We were, I want to say we were desperate and poor, but, mm-hmm. I mean, we were tight. But we never missed a meal. We never, we never missed a meal. We didn't have a lot, but... We do, we're taught not to steal. Mm-hmm. Well, you can be wealthy by not needing a lot. Exactly. Peace doesn't come with things. Wealth does not mean physical things. Chapter right. 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. What? What was the question? The kind of trick question, wasn't it? And those are not eat every yeah. tree of the you, In other words, you can't touch anything here, right? right. The woman said unto the serpent, first thing she done wrong was talk back to him. Yep. Mm-hmm. Talk to You can't read with the devil. 
Nope. You can't read with the flesh either. Do you know the flesh is deceive, it will deceive you? No, no. Can I ask another question here among the adults? How many of you have ever justified a sin? No. <laughs> All of us probably have. It wasn't my fault. No. It's your fault. You did it. You made me do it. that. Yeah. Just Flip Wilson. The devil made me do it. Mm -hmm. No, he didn't. He got very popular with that. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the, of the fruit of the trees of the garden. She's just taking time to dispute the devil. Mm -hmm. Well, how did she know it was the devil? Well, she did. There's a serpent. There's a, a natural being. She could see that, obviously. A walking snake. She could see the snake. Yep. And she knew the commandment of God. That you could eat all the trees but one. And here just being said, you can't eat any trees. Satan is subtle. Mm -hmm. He is very cunning. And you don't try to reason with him. He knows how to twist things. He does. But, but she said, but of, the but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, <clears throat> neither shall you touch it. She added to the word. Yep, she did. She added to Lest you die. Yep. Yep, right there. Now listen. Now she knew what the commandment was. Did she not know it? Yes, she, did. she knew what it was. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. A direct contrary to the law given by God. Yep. Mm -hmm. But yet she was thinking about it. Now listen, this is important. Man's and Satan's ideas appeal to the human flesh. Our flesh is powerful, Phil. It's a worthy adversary that I got crucified every day. Anybody, anybody besides me have that problem? Mm -hmm. okay. For God is for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Professing self be wise to become fools. Mm -hmm. And you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Looks like a carrot. Dangle a carrot? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Fell a mule. Yep. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, she went so far already to look upon it and think it does look good. How many's ever looked at man's benefits? Like, man, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. That sounds good. Yep. Yep. Feel mm -hmm. what you're thinking. I've seen some good-looking apples though that didn't taste very good. They have store box. Yeah. <laughs> they shine real pretty, don't they? Yeah. Probably had a worm in it after right? the wax. Now, and listen, she, she looked upon it, and it looked good for food. <coughs> yeah. And then it was pleasant to the eyes. Gosh, that sin's pretty. Mm -hmm. And sin's a pleasure for a season. Oops. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. The wisdom of man is foolishness before God. That's right. She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to just pay attention. Satan offered them something they thought was un, uh, for beyond they could ever have. They wanted freedom. They wanted to be like God. They wanted to know good and evil on their own. Right. They wanted to make their own decisions, live their own lives. If it feels good, do it. In other words, push they, God they aside. Didn't, they didn't want to be obedient, <coughs> submissive, accountable, or responsible. That's exactly right. So they wanted to take something that they thought would benefit themselves. Is that called selfishness? Yeah, selfishness. Sin is selfish. Satan all you can be. <laughs> what be all you can be. Exactly. Now, let's go to James chapter 1. <clears throat> I'm going to try to wrap this up in a few minutes. James chapter 1. Satan offered a, a first treatment. We're going to talk about it in a minute. But James chapter 1. Let's look at mm -hmm. verse 14. Well, you know, look at the world today and you, you get these, these tremendous offers in the mail all the time. You get these tremendous offers and phone calls, you know. Yep. You, you just want a trip to the Bahamas. I mean, you yeah. know, I'm, we're seeing a proliferation of... of uh, of BS, <laughs> maybe on 
Oh yeah, I, I don't want that. Imagination. You just want six thousand, six million dollars. Yeah. yeah, come and collect it. Yeah, give us just all your send money. us a thousand dollars up front, and we'll get it over to you or something. But that's indicative of people's mindset because that's what they're looking for. Hundreds of thousands of people probably have fallen for that snare. I've seen yeah. on, on the news where this person fell for that on uh, some nation, somebody in Africa promised me. Ten million dollars, and I send them some money to get over here, and it's all the more thing you got to do. Right. They spend all their savings trying to get that money, mm -hmm. and they're and they're they're angry. That's money greed. Never came. That's greed. It was their own fault. That's greed. Supposed to be. Money never came. There, there was a man that I used to listen to that said a lot of good things. What really upset me was one time he said about playing the lottery. He said. Everyone should play the lottery because it gives you hope, keeps your hope alive. My Ooh, playing no. the lottery Ouch. to keep your hope the alive. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at this. Now, I just said in, in Genesis one, you can't blame Satan. Mm -hmm. Genesis two, I mean mm -hmm. Genesis three. You can't blame Satan. No, nope. you can't blame Satan. No, because you took choice. a hook. He may be the tempter. Your choice. It's your choice. That's what the Bible said in James chapter one, verse fourteen. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. If she had lusted for the apple, she wouldn't have been tempted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and enticed. Boy, there are some very enticing things in the world, aren't they? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. I've seen a few of them walk down the street. Yeah, you got to walk away. <laughs> I, I'm going to say this on the camera, and, I, and, and I'll say it because I'm only a man. You'd be surprised at the women who come on to me knowing I'm a pastor. Yeah, One woman told me years ago, I want, I want you, I want your body. This is God's truth. That was Satan speaking truth. It was. Yeah. And I, you know, that put a scare in me. I mean, really, I got, I got a jolt. Uh, uh, well, see ya. <laughs> I mean, this really scared me. Yeah. I was stunned, shocked that like, she would say that, and she wasn't an, was not an ugly woman. But you didn't expect it. And the source had come from it really, really stunned me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, that, no, oh, believe me, I'm a man. Temptation could have been there. I married a woman, Kelly. Well, you're supposed to. Exactly. <laughs> she attracted me. We got married, and then we had a good relationship. But I'm telling you, Satan will come at you in ways you don't expect it. <clears throat> you better be prepared. If it says, you're drawn away by your own lust and enticed by your own lust. Then when lust has conceived, pay attention. It brings forth sin. Sin was not a sin. Temptation was not a sin. The enticement was not a sin. But when it conceived, it brings forth sin. Right. And sin brings forth death. Yep. <laughs> Is that true? Yes. You may not die physically immediately, but you're spiritually already dead. Yep. Do not err, my beloved brother. Make a few more comments, going to close for the day. But I, you cannot and don't you ever tell somebody that was somebody else's fault you did that. No one can make you sin but yourself. Satan hasn't got the power unless you invite him in. And I tell you right now, there's so many doors in this world today to do that with all around you. You got to be constantly on guard, constantly on guard. Yes. And Natalie, he'll make it sound so pretty. He makes it sound so innocent. He makes it sound so right. You are loving, aren't you? God, God is love. He would never judge somebody. <laughs> you can't judge somebody. You're a Christian. Uh, they're going to start talking about feelings. You oh, yes. Out. When watch it is out. law, black and white, it becomes feelings, then uh, you're in a dangerous gray area. And they've been pushing that in the school systems now for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. Well, this, they just said a minute ago, I'm going to say it again. Sin, any sin, is idolatry. Mm -hmm. Covetousness, which is idolatry. It's anything that you put before God. Exactly. Yeah, I believe he coveted the fruit. Mm -hmm. That is idolatry. It's just like at the senior center when we go, I go over there for lunch. Before they even serve the lunch, they tell everybody to stand up and do the pledge. And you know what I do? My hands are behind my back. I'm looking at the floor. I am yeah. not looking at that flag. I'm not going to pledge the flag. No. But understand no. this, folks. I'm loving you enough to tell you the truth. That sin is selfish, self-centered, and self-indulgence. It is idolatry. You have made yourself your own God. And that is idolatry. We're not going to finish this lesson another time. But I've got to tell you this again. Man's remedies are temporary. 
You saw them all over this world for years. You just you desired the things and benefits of man to fix your problem. But it never fixes it. It just gives a little bandage over a wound that's gushing blood. Christ is the answer in your life. I don't care what the question is. Again, you're looking at a mere mortal here. One day you're going to see this body lay down and die. The world goes on long enough, I'm going to die one day. Today, tomorrow, 20 years from now, I don't know. But I'm going to die one day. And by the way, so are you. Whether you're 15, 20, 50, 60, or 80, or 90, you're going to die. You're going to, it's appointed in you once to die. And after that, you will be judged. Right. You better be judged now and clean by the blood of Christ. <laughs> Ask for forgiveness for your sin because we're all sinners. Yeah. Ask for forgiveness before it's too late. If you're <coughs> already born again, I urge you to do not as I do because I'm something special, but that we all need to do. Seek Christ more daily. Seek his will, seek his face, seek his wisdom, seek his knowledge, so you can stand in the days of adversity. We have not seen anything yet. No. No. This nation is going to be judged so severely that no nation in the history of the world, including Solomon Gomorrah, has ever been judged like it. But first, judgment comes upon the house of God. We're already seeing that. Satan's wrath will mm -hmm. fall on us. God's wrath will fall on the sinner. Satan's wrath is coming to us. Mm -hmm. You better be rooted in Christ or he'll blow you off the rock. Any comments in closing? The whole thing in our daily lives, Butch, is being disciplined. We can't blame anybody else. It's us. It's us. Every time I point that at someone, I get three of them at me. Well, all men are given a temptation. Mm -hmm. That's just being a man or a woman, mankind. But we don't have to give in to it. We can ask for deliverance. We can flee temptation. Sometimes we still mess up, don't we? Oh, yeah. That's where grace comes in. But that grace is not a license to continue to sin. That's when you fall. Mm -hmm. You tripped. You get up. I forgive you, son. Go on. Wipe the dust off. Wipe the dust evil. off and go on. Any comments at all? Mary, you want to say anything? Dick? No. Anybody? All right. We'll see you next time. We'll see you on the uh, first, first, Sunday first Sunday in July. July. It's the sixth. <laughs> That's right after the fourth, I believe. Okay. I think it's the sixth. Sixth. Okay. See you there.